Hello everyone, I hope I find you well wherever you are. Welcome to this very important Facebook broadcast here on this link, Paul Sayangori. Please share this link with your friends and family, wherever they are. It's important that we get as many numbers as possible because today's message is gonna be electrifying. Hi, my name is Teach Matthias. It's good for me to be here. And I hope that you enjoy and are edified by today's broadcast and today's message. It gives me great pleasure to welcome a great man of God. I call him the Professor of Light. And some like to call him the great seer of our time, Professor Paul Sayangoli. Hello, how are you, Mr. Matthias? You know, last week, I was watching at home, enjoying your broadcast thoroughly. Mm. It was an amazing broadcast. Mm. touched on many very important elements about not just the season we find ourselves in, mm. but also the power of the Word of God. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you? How's your family? How's everything else? They're very good. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, the great men of God and I have scoured all four corners of the earth. We've been all over the place. We've had fantastic and amazing experiences together preaching the word of God. And it's good for us to be back together on the broadcast today. Mm -hmm. We're about to do some amazing things. Mm -hmm. God is good. God <laughs> is good. The prophet of light. I think a lot of people struggled to understand where you are coming from. Although they enjoyed the broadcast last week. And for people to therefore uh, be on the same level with you tonight. I'd like for you to recap on what you were talking about concerning time last week. Okay, basically, last week I was um, trying to show people how we can get to understand the times that we are living in and what we can do in those times so we spoke about how Christ is time in the sense that he is the beginning in in revelations 1 verse 8 he says I'm the beginning and I'm the end now the moment you talk about the beginning and the end you're talking about the timeline yes. because the timeline that's the space between the beginning and the end so when Jesus says I'm the beginning and the, the end he's simply saying I'm the timeline yes so he's time so since he's time for us to understand the years that we are living in we need to go back to him because he is time because he's like the clock itself. yes yes exactly so which then brings me to 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 what i want to share with them today concerning time again because the bible says in the book of genesis 1 verse 14 and god made lights in the firmament now the firmament that's the space between the earth and the heaven and god made lights now the lights that the bible is talking about that's the sun the greater light then the moon then the stars they're all in the firmament now why did he make the sun the moon and the stars the bible says for signs for seasons for days and years now, the moment you, you, you hear that, you now want to find out how do people get to understand signs, seasons, days, and years using the lights. That's where you, can, you then discover that before we had the watch, uh, I see. Yes. people were using the stars to they know did, the time. I remember that traditionally. you see you see you see exactly at the same time we know that we have four years or we, we can talk about four years from today how when we know that the sun or the earth is rotating around the sun so we are using the sun to know the years i don't know if you get what i'm saying at the same time they were using the stars to get directions they were using the stars to know when to plant and went to harvest they didn't have a calendar like us right but then if you look at what i've just said that's natural information which they were getting from the lights which represents time as we know it exactly but then there are people 
who then developed to a level where they were able to get spiritual information from the light. For an example, the wise men from the east. The Bible says they saw the star and they knew that a king is born. This is not natural information. They were now getting spiritual information from the stars. That's why you find you have stars of the zodiac. Yes. These are people who are studying stars to get spiritual information. Right? And then you have God saying to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 4 verse 19. When you look up to the heavens, do not worship the lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why is God saying that? Remember, in, we are in Deuteronomy here. Deuteronomy is a book which was written when they came out of Egypt. Yes. And in Egypt, they were worshipping the stars. That's where you have the sun God, the moon God. Yes. Even if you look at the pyramids, yes. the great pyramid of Giza, if you look at them, the way they are aligned, they are aligned in, 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 in the same line with the stars that are in the heaven because they were worshipping the stars. They were actually getting information, spiritual information from the stars. So that's the danger now with the information that God put in the lights. God put natural information in the lights. At the same time, he puts uh, spiritual information. That's why you find even your grandmother, when we're growing up, my grandmother would be able to say, uh, because the moon is full, people are going to get sick. Yes. You should remember when you're growing up, how were they able to pick such information? Which means there's some spiritual information in the stars, the moon and the sun. But the danger now, people begin to worship. So God had to find a way to make sure that people don't worship these lights. Comes the greatest light. Who is that light? Jesus Christ. And if you look at the three lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they are all representatives of Christ. He is called the bright morning star. Yes. Now, the moment Jesus is represented by these lights, automatically it means the characteristics that these lights have, Jesus has them. If the sun, the moon, and the stars can be used to, to give spiritual information, know that Christ can do it even better. That's what I was talking about last week. So Christ becomes the light that gives us information. How does he do that? Who is Christ? Christ is the word according to John 1 verse 14. Christ is the word. So if Christ is the light and he's the word, it means the word of God is light. So when we study the word of God, we are studying light. And when you study light, you get information. What kind of information? Spiritual information and even natural information. You can get to know the times and what to do in those times. Wow. So, so the, essentially, as you're saying, there are two types of how people naturally access information mm. through light. Mm. One mm. is astronomy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and two is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Jesus is the superior light mm -hmm. that spiritual mm -hmm. provides. Mm -hmm. So, my duty now as a pastor is to move people from trying to get information from the things that were created to, to the one who created the greatest light. Who is Go back to the source. Yes. Do you know when we study the Bible, right now we are studying light and we, we can get to know the times. The Bible can tell us, can explain to us what is happening right now. Like I'm going to show you today. The Bible can tell us exactly what is happening and what to do in those times. Wow. Mm. Very, very because it is a light. So, so prophet, does Jesus tell time according to the calendar? Does God use the calendar in order for him to tell time? That's, that's a very good question. You know, most of us, we think God's time is like our time. If God says, I'm going to do something for you, in my mind, I think maybe he's going to do it on the 30th of June. <laughs> he doesn't open it. I'm going I'm to show you yes, something from yeah. the Bible. There's a scripture, Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14. The Bible says, if you have your Bible, you can open. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face. Then the next word is so interesting. Then I will answer them. I will forgive them. I will heal their land. I want you to I want you to see something. 
God is going to heal or God is going to do things for these people not according to time in this world but there are certain conditions that need to be ah, in yes. the world for then that time to be triggered so what triggers God's time are conditions God sets certain conditions here on earth which when they are met which when they are prevailing his time is triggered so God does not say on the 30th of December I'll give you a car or I'll heal you no <laughs> God sets a condition let me ask you a question man of God so is there significance on crossover nights when people gather together as a congregation or as a church to pray and to speak into the new year from the 31st of December until the 1st of January you know when when we do that we are trying to like when when you have 2021 mm-hmm. on the third phase you're moving into the the new year what is happening there is you are being given a year in numbers but what the man of god is trying to do is to give you the the, the name the year in word is uh-huh. naming the year yes. you can name the year that's when he comes up and says it is the year of order uh-huh. what he's doing now he is giving you the year in words because man understands words so now you can understand the year because it has now been delivered to you in words i don't know if you're hearing what i'm saying so which brings me back to the issue of conditions so for god to then for, for god's time to be triggered there are certain conditions that need to be prevailing if those conditions are not prevailing even if it was supposed to happen on the 31st it, it will, will not, not happen, happen because <laughs> the conditions are not yes they there. have not been made. that's why you find brings me to the issue of christ coming back that's why you find when jesus was going to heaven he did not give us a date of when he's coming back that's quite interesting because a lot of the information that i'm receiving especially on social media today from a lot of pastors mm-hmm. it's regarding the fact that all the issues and the problems the world is facing today mm. is in preparation of rapture okay is this the time for rapture how do i how do i how do i say this okay when jesus was going he did not give us a date of when he will come back mm-hmm. or when the end will come but he told us the conditions okay that will trigger i see the time for him to come back even if you go to the book of mark 13 verse 32 he says no one knows the hour the day even the son of man even him jesus he doesn't know the day that is coming back <laughs> he only knows the conditions so when you hear someone saying jesus is coming back in 10 years or 20 years you better ask them again are you are you do you know what you're talking about so what's going on with a lot of men of god who are predicting that in the next five years the next 10 years if uh, if they go into prayer today for a certain number of days after they finish that prayer jesus will be back jesus will be at earth's doorstep no, about no, no, to enter no. i'm saying this if the one who is coming back does not know the day that is coming yes how did you know the day it's not about the day it's not about the hour it's about the conditions if the conditions prevail all the conditions that are supposed to trigger is coming back if they prevail right now is coming today if they prevail in 10 years is coming in 10 ah, years see, see. if it's 100 years so it's not about the date it's not about the hour it's about the, the conditions, conditions. Okay. so what the season that we are in right now we are in a season where the conditions are being created which would then trigger I don't know if you're hearing what I'm yes. saying. Which would then trigger the coming back or the end, as we may would call it. Would we say, man of God, that COVID is one of the conditions that may trigger the coming back of Christ? Okay. You have your Bible, Matthew 24, verse number 6, I'm sure. The Bible talks about you hear rumors of war. Yes. You hear kingdoms fighting against kingdom. Then you hear about pestilence. Yes. Now, it's not a singular word there. 
sprua, which means there are many types of pestilence that, yes. that will come. True. Right? And COVID is one of them. Right. And it's not the only one. It's not the only one. And it's not the first one. You had swine flu before. You have, yes, we did. You have HIV. You have... And similar conditions prevailed during, you know, the yes. era of, of swine flu. When people were asked to wear masks as well. Mm-hmm. And people were asked to, to retain their hygiene and cleanliness mm-hmm. and to socially distance. Mm-hmm. So this really is not something entirely new. Mm-hmm. So it's just a condition that is being created to trigger time. And it's not the only one. So more of these may happen? Yes. It's not the only one. It's not the only condition. But all these things, they are pointing towards the triggering of the times. Of the time that Christ will uh-huh. come and rapture the church. I don't know if it's making sense yeah, to you. It's making sense. It's starting to make sense. You know, if, if you look at it this way, I'm going to say it this way. The story of Moses taking the children of Israel out of Egypt and into Canaan. It's a mirror of Jesus taking the church from the earth to heaven. Oh, really? Your Egypt yes. being the earth. Okay. Your Canaan being heaven. Ah, uh, I see. Your Moses being Christ. Mm-hmm. So there are things that are in the story of the Exodus that can help us understand the times that we're in. Give me some examples. Yes. So before I go there, I want you to see something. I thought the question that you're going to ask me was, so is God behind? <laughs> yes, some people say that COVID is of the devil. And perhaps God was even surprised that today Earth is is under serious tragic conditions. He is probably as surprised as you. You know what yes the the sickness the wars and what they may come from the devil but people don't understand something about the devil i'm gonna say this the devil works for god but with no pay <laughs> explain there's nothing that the devil does on earth without god allowing him so all these people that are dying is god allowing for them to die god if I, as a christian a man or a Christian woman and a family member dies, how am I supposed to react to if that? If you die today, mm-hmm. there's no need if you die today yes. and you're in Christ, mm-hmm. there's no need for us to cry. There's more reason for us to celebrate. Because, going, because where you are going is a better place. <laughs> you know why we cry <laughs> when people die? Uh-huh. We don't know where they're going. I see. If God allows us to see where people go, we will all want to go there. If I die, I'm telling the whole world, don't cry. When I die, don't cry. Celebrate. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually a, better, a promotion. Do you know what Paul says? Paul yeah. says, if for me to die is to live. Yes. Because when I yeah. die, I'm now in Christ yeah. fully. Yes, true. true. You know, if you read Romans, it says, the glory that is going to be revealed to us cannot be compared to the sufferings mm-hmm. that we have seen here on earth. The glory that God will reveal when you are in heaven. <laughs> I'm telling the lifestyle that you're going to live. <laughs> yeah. I know you love things. <laughs> when you go to heaven, I'll be in Bengal. <laughs> my guy. You hear yeah. what I'm saying? So, I'm saying, there's nothing that the devil does without God allowing him. Because God, remember, he said, I own the earth. So it's like earth belongs to him. Yeah, that's true. So there's no one who do whatever they want with the earth without him allowing him. For an example, this is your house, right? There's no one who will come and remove the roof without you allowing. That's so true. You hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There are times when God worked with the devil. Okay. For an example, in the story of Job. Yes. Do you know that Job did not know that God had had a meeting with the devil and had allowed the devil <laughs> to do whatever he was doing? That's true. God operates like a mobster or what do you call him? <laughs> gangster. A gangster. People don't understand God. Yeah. You know? There's one time when Jesus said to Peter, the devil has asked of you from God. Mm. Not only that, we have a story where God actually sent a demon into the prophets. Yes, yes, yes. Why didn't he send angels? Why choose a demon? Which means there are times when God allows or works Uh 
with the devil to but achieve, with no pay as you were saying to achieve certain conditions you see what i'm saying because there are things that can only be achieved when god uses the devil and after he has been used you'll be bent but that's the funny thing after he has been used you'll be thrown <laughs> into hell <laughs> that's his reward so so as christians covid ooh has really ravaged all our lives mm-hmm. our businesses places of environment homes relationships how are we meant to understand that this has been allowed to occur by god okay so remember i said the story of exodus is a mirror of the story of christ rapturing the church yes. but if you look at that story there are things that are happening there the exodus story you find god is going and hardening pharaoh's heart the only person to who knows a certain result. you see the <laughs> only person who knows that god is behind what pharaoh is doing is the writer but the people who are experiencing the suffering they don't even know do you know you can be going through something and the devil is causing that thing yet god is behind so god is behind pharaoh pushing him to harden his heart you know god was playing like chess he hardens pharaoh's heart he goes and sends moses yes. Ten times mm-hmm. imagine mm-hmm. he hardens pharaoh's heart he sends you hear what i'm saying so in that story you then discover you then ask why is god doing this because there are certain conditions that need to be prevailing for the time uh-huh. of the children of israel to to be yes. taken out of egypt the time to be triggered nice. remember god does not work with the calendar he works with conditions which trigger mm-hmm. time okay. so now he wants these children out those conditions needs to be preferring so he now pushes pharaoh as he's pushing pharaoh the conditions are being created as the conditions are being created the time is triggered wow that's quite profound which then brings us to the story of rapture he then should i go there now <laughs> I, th- i think you should importantly i just want to go back to to covid because covid really um, a lot of men of god have not dealt with the reason for covid and how to deal with it as the children of god shall we shall we be afraid of the outcome after covid are we being protected by god do our prayers mean anything What do you think? Okay, Mr. Matthias, what I'm about to say here you have just pushed me to say. What I'm about to say here it's a prophecy. Oh, really? Mhm. Okay. But this prophecy is not coming from a vision or a dream that I had. Like others would say but i'm going to remove a prophecy or i'm going to extract a prophecy concerning what we are going through right now from the bible i'm going to show you that there are things that happened in the bible 100,000 years ago when they were happening they were happening to explain the times that we are in right now so do you have your bible with you Go to the book of Exodus chapter number 10. I want to show you something. It is chapter number 10 and verse number 13. So Now I'm going to try and show you where the but Remember I said the Exodus story is a mirror. Let me remind our viewers once again. It is Exodus 10 verse 13 13 right remember i said the story of exodus is a mirror of the story of christ rapturing the church mm-hmm. there were conditions that were created for the cha- for the israelites to be taken and i said egypt is the earth the world israel that's the church canaan that's heaven Moses that's Christ. You hear what I'm saying? So, I'm going to show you from one of the plagues 
that ravaged Egypt. I will show you the pandemic. From one of the blacks, we're going to see God prophesying about the pandemic and what we are supposed to do. Should we do that today? Yes, <laughs> Read verse 18. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the Lord brought an east wind. A what? An east wind. A what? An east wind. And then what? Upon the land all day and all night. Mm -hmm. When it was morning, mm -hmm. the east wind brought the locusts. The locusts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question. When COVID started, where did it come from? It came from the east. From the what? From the east. Now, the scripture that you read, the scripture that you read, yeah. said the wind is coming from where? From the east. From the east. Now, when this wind came, there's something that it did before it brought the locusts. It blew day and night, especially night. Why night? Because in the night we are all sleeping. It's hidden. We don't know what's happening. So there's something that was cooked up. And we didn't know what was being cooked up. And we woke up one day. And this thing was here. But this thing has been cooked up from the east. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? It was cooked up. I'm not going to say who cooked it up. I don't want to spend time explaining the wind. We want to go to the solution. Cooked up from the east. The pl it's, it's a plug in the time of, of, of Moses. But it's going to explain what is happening right now. It's a direct prophecy. From the east comes a wind. Blows upon the earth. Because remember in this time Egypt is is, is the, that's the world in that time it's, that was the world that's the world that's the world you hear what I'm saying so it blows and brings this thing the locust the locust there that's the virus what does it do can you, can you, can you read and the locusts came upon over all the land of Egypt and mm. settled down mm. on the whole country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A very dreadful mess of them. Mm -hmm. Never before were there such locusts mm -hmm. as these. Mm -hmm. no, were Never before were what? Never what? Never before were there such locusts. Have you ever heard about COVID before? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never before. <laughs> and what else? For they covered the whole land so that the ground was darkened mm -hmm. and they ate everything. They ate everything. What is COVID doing right now? Yeah. It's eating everything. everything. Every bit of the vegetables of the land and mm. all the fruits of the trees. It's destroying everything. Yes. Do you know that governments are going down to their knees because of this yeah, thing? That's true. That's true. Let's go. And uh, not a green thing of the trees. Of the green trees. there represents life. Yes. And the plants of the field in all of the land of Egypt. Mm hmm Verse number 16, mm. then Pharaoh sent for Moses mm -hmm. and Aaron in haste. Mm -hmm. He said, I have sinned against the Lord your God. And mm -hmm. Now therefore forgive my sin, I pray you, only this once. Go to verse number 19. Number 19. Ah. And the Lord turned. Listen to this part, guys, wherever you are, listen e to this part. Exodus 10, number 19, and the Lord turned a violent west wind. A what? A violent west wind. Wait there. A violent what? West wind. What did it do? Which lifted the locusts. Lifted the locusts. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And drove them into the Red Sea. Uh -huh. Not only, not one locust remained in all the country of Egypt. Listen. So they were gone. Listen. <laughs> the locusts came from the east, ravaged the land. But the solution for the locusts came from the west. Right now, we are talking about the vaccine. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the west. Are you seeing what I'm talking about here? From the east yes. comes the locust. The locust which, is the virus. which is the virus. But from the west comes the solution. Which right? Is the which is the vaccine. But there's something about the wind from the west. Can you read again? 
verse 19 again uh -huh. the lord turned a violent a violent which means this wind was not calm it was violent so there is violence behind this wind that is bringing a solution it is a solution but there's violence behind it <laughs> yeah. i'm not going to explain the violence uh, okay, okay god showed me everything about this violence but i don't have time for that there's a violence behind the wind that is bringing a solution i've said too much there i'll repeat there is a violence behind the wind that is bringing a solution Something though it's bringing a solution but there's violent. a violence now if it is violent you must know where it is coming from it has caused problems where it's going it will cause problems <laughs> that's why you find even in the west because of this vaccine there's their problems right where it's coming to us we already have problems yes. <laughs> are you hearing what i'm saying from the east comes the wind that brings the locust from the west comes the solution but the solution behind it this violence now the question that i want you to ask me is who brought the wind from the east yes who brought the wind from the east <laughs> <laughs> who brought the wind from the east that yes. brought this thing yes. look at this remember we are saying moses stood right then he lifts up his rod now the rod communicates with the wind in the east not moses and a rod in the bible represents authority which means this rod has been given authority by moses Remember I said Moses is Christ. So Christ has allowed this rod, he has given it authority to lift that wind. Wow. Yes. Are you hearing what no, I'm, I'm saying? I understand. I'm very deep but I'm understanding. Now, who is this rod in this time? Yes, who Listen. Is this rod? Remember this rod was once a part of a tree. It had life inside. So once it was taken out of the tree, it's dead. It's dead. So these are people who don't have life in them that have been given authority wow. to lift the wind from the east but this authority they've been given by christ why has christ allowed them to lift this wind because he wants them to create the conditions that, that trigger time <laughs> yes and if you check the same road that lifted the wind from the east is the same road that lifted the wind that from brought solution wow. i'm not going to give you names here but the rod represents a group of people who are dry they are lifeless but they've been given authority in them there's no life in them there's no love in them there's no mercy but they've been given authority to create the condition they've created that condition by by bringing a wind from the east and also bringing a violent wind you know what is so funny about this thing is that Pharaoh is actually surprised yes, he is. by what is happening. <laughs> and remember, Pharaoh represents the governments. Yes. Do you know that the governments of this time they are actually surprised? Yeah, that's true. What is happening? Yeah, yeah. Which means there's a group of people at di di yeah. not attached to the governments yeah. who have raised yeah. this thing, and the governments are in shock. I don't know if you are hearing no, what I am saying. Can you see how the Bible wow. is able wow. Wow. to talk about something that it will happen thousands of years later? This is quite sad. You hear what I'm saying? Now, I don't want to spend time explaining the wind. I can spend the whole day talking to you about the east wind. Which is what happened, what's, you know, now that you're saying that, man of God, a lot of the times I try and look for solutions within the Christian community. They are not giving me the solutions. Instead, they are telling me about the problem that I'm facing, that I would like to resolve. That's the challenge. When you find someone, do you know, I can spend hours explaining to you about the East Wind, tell you names, who did what, but that does not help it the church. Does not help. I can spend hours explaining the West Wind, telling you names. I can spend time talking about the road. Who is this group called the road? But that does not help the church. The question that you're going to ask me is, in this time when all these things were happening, what were the children of Israel doing? Exactly. The moment we know what the children of Israel were doing, 
we now know what to do in this time in this time i, I don't know if you're hearing what i'm saying <laughs> so go that's ahead, the part that ahead, we need to explain ahead. i don't have to talk about the wind i need to talk about christ do you know there's a story in the bible the book of mark where jesus gets into a boat there's a wind that comes blows against yes. the the boat right jesus is sleeping fast asleep in the lower deck mm-hmm. now do you know if the writer of this story continues to write about the wind people are going to die the writer needs to be wise enough to switch the wind to the solution you hear what i'm saying <laughs> that's the challenge we have in nowadays yeah. we have people who are good at explaining the wind more than explaining the one who solves the problem we can explain the wind all we want because right now do you know what if you ask me there's something that i want you to know the moment i talk about the east wind west wind there are two other winds that i've left out the north and the south they also have a part to to play here but i I don't have time for that Mm -hmm. we need to come to the solution what were the children of israel doing when all these things were happening that will help us to understand what we are supposed to be doing in this time because we are living in a time which is mirrored to the time to the time of Moses now number one the children of Israel they were in Goshen there's a land called Goshen in Egypt which was given to Joseph by Pharaoh or Jacob by Pharaoh and the children of Israel were staying there now that part of the land the bible says god made sure that when the locusts came they were not going to that place the locusts were in a level where if they were flying around they would tell each other this is goshen don't go there <laughs> are you hearing what i'm saying i'm understanding the locusts were telling each other we can go everywhere else but this place do not enter i'm born even when 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 you call the nuts g n a t s yes. those small flies yes, yes, yes. they knew we are not supposed to go yeah. to it. the darkness when it came yeah. it knew we are not supposed to go there. <laughs> so we need to teach people how to create a goshen in such a time in how do you own personal environment yes how do you create a goshen yes, in such yes, a time yes, yes. the bible says the goshen was protected by the lord who is the Lord? Psalms 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. So this Goshen was protected by the light. Now what is the light? Psalms 1, 1 9, verse 105. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Right? Is a light to my feet. A lamp to my path. So the word of God is light. Because the word of God is light. According to Psalms 1, 1 9 verse 105 yes. so if the word of god is light it means the word of god is the one which is able to create a caution for us so there's a certain type of gospel that people need to hear in this time i think that's very important because there's a lot of spiritual noise at this time mm. Mm. we really need to concentrate mm. on what god is saying mm. in the season mm. you know Please explain to you know you know you know the problem is if you buy a fake shoe don't think it will not come with the name of the original shoe <laughs> if you buy a fake georgia man yeah it will be written georgia man yeah, true. but only when you wear it don't be fooled by the name <laughs> people are hearing fake gospel in the name of jesus christ the moment I talk more about me, that's good. that gospel is false. There is a gospel that needs to be preached in this time. That will need, you, 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 I actually need an hour to explain that, that gospel type of gospel. Teach you know me. I've not been preaching for four years. Mm-hmm. You should ask me what were you doing? Yes, what were you doing? I've been traveling, right? Mm-hmm. But not preaching in yes. a church. Yeah. God told me, shut down your ministry. 2016, you are preaching the wrong gospel. Then for four years, he has been giving me the gospel. I didn't know why. Now I understand. Oh, it was for this, for this time. That's why now last month, he then said, this January, you have to go online. 
bring the true gospel that creates a Goshen. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. Is it making sense? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Right? So the first thing that the children of Israel were doing, they were in Goshen. We need more services to explain Goshen. I can't do it now. Someone needs to come back again next week. Men of God is for you to start to engage people on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, moments before we went live mm -hmm. was the fact that there is a lot of misinformation mm -hmm. and people need to be given a portal mm -hmm. to access mm -hmm. the correct information. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should set something up like that soon. That's your duty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it done. Consider it done. So, the first thing that they were doing there in Goshen, we need days and days to talk about the Goshen effect. For people to have the Goshen, so that this thing will not come to your house. Yes. Because well, I, I want to back your statement up. There are a lot of people and a lot of places that have been protected from this thing. Mm -hmm. You see? Go to Israel right now. I don't want to talk much. Go to Israel right now. There's what is called a Goshen effect. You need to learn about that. Number one. Number two, they, when the plagues were happening, there's something that happened on the 10th plague. The Bible says, Moses told the people to put the blood of the lamp yes, on the door. Now, I want, I want you to see something. If they were putting blood on the door, for the angel of death to see the blood. I want you to know something. It means the doors were closed. Yes. So if the doors were closed, it means they were in lockdown. Yes. <laughs> so in the time of Moses, there was, there was lockdown. a lockdown. <laughs> yes. That's why I'm saying the story of Moses is a mirror yes. of the times that we are in right now. So that was the first lockdown. But what they did in that lockdown, they put blood on the door. So shall we put blood on the doors of our homes? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, listen to this. Yeah. The first thing that I want to say is, imagine the children of Israel. These were like three million people. Yes, they were. So are you telling me Moses went family by family? Exactly. What happened? To place. He must blood. have raised a generation of preachers. We went about teaching people how to put the blood, how to smear it on the door. Yes. So there's a generation that God needs to is raising right now. Wow. That would yes, that would teach wow. people how to put blood on the door. Now, when it comes to the issue of blood, you have just asked me. So, are you saying we should take blood? No, 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 no. Listen to this. Listen to this. When you talk about the blood of the lamp, there's something that I want you to know. There's a, there's a scripture in Leviticus. It says, when you kill an animal, you can only eat the meat. Yes. But don't drink the blood. Because in the blood, that's where the life of the animal is. Yes, so the life of an animal or the life of Tishmatas is in his blood. true of all religions and, and all men around. This is scientific. Yes, it is very scientific. Because right now, if you get sick, they take your blood. To understand what is that's, happening that's where that's where i live that's where my essence is that's where you are is in my blood. that's where you are you hear it so if you eat or if you drink the blood you are like a vampire you are you are eating the life <laughs> yes. are you hearing what i'm saying mm -hmm. right so if we are not allowed to eat the blood because there's life inside what does that mean it now means if you go to john 1 verse number 4 the bible says in him was life and the life was the light of men. They're talking about Christ here. Now, if the blood of a man is if the life of a man is in his blood, yet the life of Christ is light, it means the blood of Christ is light. <laughs> if you were to ah, I don't want to go there. Okay, let me just say the blood of Christ is light. light. Now, what did I say about light? Light is the word of God. So the blood of Christ is the word of God. Brings so me back right to the gospel. Word of God is the blood of so there's a certain type wow. of gospel that these people need to hear. Yes. 
They don't need to be told about the wind. Wow. 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 That's because we are now preparing them for the condition because the conditions are coming thick and fast. This is not the last one. This is not the last one. They are coming thick and fast. There's a part where we are going to be beaten up for preaching the gospel. We are not there yet. And you know the one big condition that is going to trigger the end that people need to know is when the gospel of the kingdom reaches to all nations. God has not put, okay. God God has, has, a lot of people have had this, this debate and this argument that uh, books the God the book of God has been translated into many different languages. Therefore the word of God has been preached mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. the, you know the entire four corners mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about the Bible. The Bible is like the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, you had two significant trees. The tree of life and the tree of death. Which means in the same garden, you can get something that can give you life. In that same garden, you can get something that can kill you. Do you know the Bible can be used to destroy people? Yes, true. This book. True. It can be used to destroy people. That's why you find we have people who in their, I don't know if I should call it Christianity or what, but using the Bible, they've married many wives. Which means families have been destroyed using the Bible. Do you know, using the Bible, there are people who are worshipping people. When I as a pastor use the Bible and twist it to talk about myself more than Christ. Meaning the Bible can be used to give life. It can also be used to destroy there are people who are lazy, who don't go work because they were told God will do it for you. They have been destroyed. But yet they don't know that. You know, God provided the lamp, Christ. But you know that it was the duty of the human beings to provide the cross on which Christ would die. You have a part to play. God does not do everything for you. God gives me the message. But I need to come here and sit here and preach, and preach by this mic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I have a part to play. So when you say the gospel has been preached, my question is which gospel? Because if you read the Bible, say it, the gospel of the kingdom. Why didn't this just say the, the gospel? Why put kingdom there? They knew people are going to come up with their own type of gospel. It's there in the Bible. If you read John 1 verse 9, the Bible says he was the true light. Why didn't the Bible just call him he was the light? Why put true there? They knew there's going to be a false light. People don't know that when you talk about the devil, people think when the devil walks in here, you'll be someone wearing black clothes. With no, 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 no. Remember his name originally is Lucifer. Lucifer means bringer of light. And that light was never taken away from him. Because when God gives you a gift, Corinthians says so, he doesn't repent. That's why when Jesus saw the devil falling, he said, I saw him falling like lightning, which means he's still a light. So if he's still a light, he has the ability to produce a false light, which when given to people sounds like true, but it's not true. There's a gospel that has gone out there, which is not true. Where people are talking about themselves, where people are talking about money. Do you know there's something that shocked me in the Bible? It shocked me. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is not about food, drink. Oh, all right, let me, let me use this one. Matthew 6, verse 33. He says, do not worry about anything, right? Yes. Do not worry about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall drink. Huh? Then he then says, but seek ye first the kingdom. He has already told you that the kingdom is not about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, and what you shall drink. But how many times do we go on pulpit and we talk about what we shall wear, what you shall eat? I, as a man of God, I stand on pulpit and I tell people, look at my shoe, $3,000. What am I doing? I'm teaching people to worry about what they shall wear. I tell them, you know, I eat Nando's every day. I've got money. I, what I'm doing, I'm teaching people to worry about what they eat. The kingdom of God is not there. So are you saying having money is bad? No. What does he say? He then says, when you have found the kingdom, all these things will be added. So these things are additional. 
when we preach about money cars houses we are preaching about additionals if i would say this in shona maybe someone uh, to those who don't understand shona sorry but i'm gonna say this in shona when these things the cars the money the ambassador that which you are given because you have bought so much ambassador so when you talk about cars and money and houses on pulpit you are preaching basera but you are not preaching that which has caused you to be given basera so there is a gospel that needs to be preached the real back to christ movement which needs to go hand in hand with the light of god yes yes that one would trigger it's one of the big or the most important conditions not me coming here exposing you teach matters not me coming here exposing tg jacks no 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 no. that's not the gospel can i ask you something teach matters let me show you something do you know that the devil was once an angel in heaven yes i do which means he knows everything about heaven of course now why is it the devil has not yet written a book about heaven why is it the devil has not yet exposed <laughs> heaven you're yeah. hearing what i'm saying yeah, I'm hearing. which means there are people who whom the devil has better loyalty than them that's why you find even in job god allowed the devil to enter heaven again he knows he will never tell people the secrets god knows even if he goes out this boy will not tell people my secrets <laughs> but we have people who are ready so why is the brethren doing that we have we have people who are ready to go on facebook internet and talk about pastors that they were under before telling us hey you used to do this that does not help the world if i'm told that you have a second wife that does not help my soul Absolutely. it actually affects my soul yes, true. i don't know if you're hearing it what i'm saying edify. it doesn't edify me christ knows the devil more than anyone else but when he came on earth he didn't tell us where the devil lives what kind of food he eats we don't have a chapter where jesus is explaining who the devil is why he knows i can't waste time exposing this one because i would divert from my purpose the moment i spend time trying to expose other pastors i am diverting from my purpose you are stealing from the true gospel of god and imagine we're in a time where people need to know what 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 are we going to do where are we going and we are busy exposing each other the world is dying people are dying souls are dying that's why i'm saying there is a gospel that when it's preached even if you look at this story of moses the last plague was the death of the firstborns but that plague was dealt with using the blood so the last thing that happened was the blood of christ and if you read matthew 24 verse 14 the bible says when the gospel has reached all the nations then the end will come now when the blood was put on the door then they went out of egypt which means the gospel that needs to be preached is the gospel about the blood of christ it triggers the end yes. and don't be afraid don't be afraid of going to heaven it's good heaven is good for it's us a promotion. it's a promotion it's like you are coming from living <laughs> from I, I don't know which i don't know from i, I don't know which one can i use yeah. i don't know you know we've been to indonesia right yeah. you know that place bandung yes it's like you're moving from bandung to jakarta yes. it's a better place you hear what i'm saying Again, you hear what i'm saying so we shouldn't be afraid shouldn't be afraid christ is coming so the reason why we are afraid is because we have not been taught how to prepare ourselves yes. if we are prepared we say come christ i want to go it means we already have a ticket to heaven. yes so our duty is boarding pass yes our duty right now as pastors is to teach people how to prepare themselves in such a time and i'm not saying christ is coming back tomorrow because i don't know when the conditions will be fulfilled Remember I said it's not about the date it's not about the hour but it's about the conditions. And God is creating using people to create those conditions. When he comes he's going to come like a thief. Thieves don't announce that I'm coming. <laughs> thieves don't make you aware that I'm coming. We are too aware for Christ to appear right now. You're not hearing so what I'm saying. I'm understanding, I'm understanding, so so these are not the end days. 
these are just the beginning. The beginning. That's what the Bible says. It says in Matthew, Matthew 24, verse 6, 7, 8, it says, when you see, when you hear about wars, kingdoms fighting against kingdom, pestilences, COVID-19, yes. then you must know that the beginning of the sufferings has come. It's only the beginning. Don't be fooled. You know, I like the part. I, I like that part of the scripture because it, it, it actually says, be aware of people who deceive you. So when these conditions begin to be created, there are people who are going to rise and deceive people. Because they think that their false doctrine is relevant. You see what I'm talking about. Right now as a church, we need to be taught how to prepare ourselves. There's a gospel that needs to be preached. That's the part that we'll go to next week where we start to talk about the gospel now. That one I urge on everyone. Tell your mother, your father, your grandfather. Now we are hearing. We are now, God has sent me to raise a generation. He sent me with a message. And I know I'm carrying that message. And I'm telling you, you need to hear this message now. This is the message that you, it's going to put blood on your door. And this sickness will not come upon your family. Amen. It's going to cause you to live in Goshen. We don't care about what is happening out there. We don't have time to explain the west wind. No, 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 no. My time, the time that I have is to tell, teach people how to put blood on the door. That's what we are supposed to be doing. You have told us, yes, the vaccine is coming. It's going to kill us. People are, well, yes, we have heard that. So what should we do? Which means I can hold this microphone and just cause people to fear. There's a lot of that happening. Huh? Do you know there are men of God right now that I don't even want to hear? Because I know the moment they start speaking about this corona thing, the only thing that you're going to have is fear. Conspiracy. No, 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 no. no. We are not here to preach conspiracy. Tell people what to do. Tell them what to do. Give them that gospel. That gospel will cause them to not to fear. They will say, even if I die right now, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. Me, I'm in a level. If I'm die, if I die right now, celebrate, Mr. Mataz. I'm home with my father. I'm with David. I'm with Jeremiah. You must know I'm with Jeremiah. I'm with I'm with Habakkuk. I'm there. I'm with Paul. I'm home. Why? Because God has given me this gospel. There's a gospel that needs to be preached. There's a gospel that needs to be preached. I don't want to go into that gospel right now. I think today you have touched on very, very important key pillars mm. of the times in which we are living in mm. and the fact that the brethren, the children of God must not fear. Mm. Shouldn't fear. They must not waste their time on negative energy, mm. negative gospel, mm. negative information. Mm. They rise up mm. in this time mm. to bring forth the true word. Mm. That's the truth. That's you have just nailed the, the head of the whatever. That's the truth. That's the thing that, that needs to be done right now. Well, God, I know a lot of people are watching today and they're thinking, how are you able to extract this kind of wisdom from the Bible? Shh. Shall we talk about it now? My guy. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll be here all night long. Someone called me. Someone called me last week and said, after the service, he said, where are you getting all these things? It took me four years to get. Do you know I can preach you went up back to school? You see? The Holy Spirit brought you back into your classroom. You remember, you I were there. I remember that. And it taught you. You remember. So, what, I'm, what, what God has told me, remember I said Moses raised a generation of pastors who were now putting blood on the door. So, what we're going to do is, maybe in February, March, I don't know, God is going to tell us. We're going to open a school. Where we we'll teach people how to get revelation that is relevant to the times. Do you know, even if you listen to what I'm saying right now, you can tell that there's a difference between the Sanyangore that you know and this Sanyangore. There's a big difference. I can confess. You hear what I'm saying? So, God said you should open a school, begin to teach people how to extract the true gospel. Do you know that the Bible has formulas? The, they, are, they are what I call biblical equations. We'll do them one day. Where we are taking equations from the Bible. There are equations in the Bible. So the and you need formulas. Yes. So the reason why you are asking me, like you are asking me how do you get revelation? I have formulas. 
there are scriptures that are in the Bible which are formulas to unlock other scriptures. For an example, you saw me saying, uh, Christ is light. So the light is the word. Why am I saying so? Because Psalms 111 says that your word is a light. So that scripture, Psalms 111, it's a, it's, it's a formula. You can apply it in certain scriptures. So that thing now needs to be taught people. The equations and how to play around with There's the Bible. There's so much that you've touched on today. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. I want to give the viewers, I want to give people who have interest in finding out the depth and the truth about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Time to digest, mm -hmm. time to reflect, time to go into some of the verses mm -hmm. and the things you've noted mm -hmm. in order for them to, to be able to absorb the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be placing right here at the bottom the different handles, social media handles, as well as YouTube. We, you are able to access this really important teaching and information mm -hmm. from Pastor Sayongori. Mm -hmm. Men of God, thank you so much. Thank I you know so we much. can go all on night. and on and all, <laughs> all night, night yeah. talking yeah. about the beauty yeah. and, 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 and the beautiful taste of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I call you the Professor of Light. Thank you. There's a lot that we need to know about false light and the real light who is Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Let's meet again next Sunday. Same yeah, for time. part three, for part three. For part three. Mm -hmm of the times and order the times and order mm -hmm. thank you very much god bless you see you soon god bless you